What's happening, guys? This is the Grandmaster of Faster, and welcome back to Let's Play Wario World. In this episode, we are going to tackle the final regular level of the game, and it's inside a pyramid. But before I forget, please be sure to leave a like or comment below and subscribe to my channel. Every one of those really helps. Okay? Okay. Let's get going. Time for a hike across the desert in Pecan Sands. And true to the nature's environment, true to the level's environment, we are going to be fighting a lot of mummies in here. Including these hulking mummies that wield gloves. Oh god, get out of the way, get out of the way, Wario. First mummies I've seen that walk around on all fours, that's a rarity. Dude, will you please stop going red so I can pick you up? Thank you very much. It's a good idea for you to grab an enemy while walking to the right because... Hello there! We see a familiar face. Don't worry, this is the last level that you will have to deal with these guys. In fact, if memory serves, I don't believe any gem monsters appeared in, uh, in Mirror Mansion. At least I can't remember them appearing. Maybe I'm wrong. But one thing I do know is... Did it just self-destruct? I don't think I've ever seen that before. And here's something else we haven't seen. Big Scorpers. These guys are exclusive to Pecan Sands. What you need to do is you need to pound on their tails three times, then you can pick them up. Uh, they can be rather annoying because it can be hard to uh, aim your jump properly. In any case, Here's a yellow W switch. Very nice. You're really going to have to search every nook and cranny in order to find the treasures because they are very well hidden throughout the level. And not only that, but some of the switches are pretty hard to find too. And speaking of switches, there's the light green one. So now let's go open the light green treasure. Presto! It was a hieroglyph. And when we go and open the yellow treasure chest, we get an ancient necklace. Oh, hello there. You are a very, very special gem monster. You want to know why? Because you are the last gem monster we will ever face. How a freaking luyah. There we go. We just need one more. And, oh, come on, really? Your defenses were still up when I threw it at you? Ha! Your defenses did Again! It's self-destructed! Well, I guess that's not totally true. Upon closer inspection, I think one of the smaller creatures lanced it, causing it to blow up. I guess you could say that's an honorable way to die, but the important thing is, it's dead. So now we won't have to deal with any more of those stupid gem monsters. Red W switch, and let's uh, deal with this big scorper. By the way, these guys are flying shovels. They serve the same purpose as uh, the monstrous magnets did in Beanstalk Way. You can throw them at a wall and they will uh, become makeshift platforms. But for now, we want to head down through this iron gate where we find a relatively easy obstacle course, truth be told. First of all, let's activate this switch or lever or whatever the hell it is, and dash across! And yeah, you're, we're gonna need that uh, last one to come down because when we stand on top of the block and hit the lever, up we go where we can collect the red diamond. But that's not the only thing that's here. If you look very, very closely, or maybe you can't see it from this angle, there is a platform down there. Oh, right at the center of the screen. Look very closely. Bombs away! Hop across and free the Spriteling. The big Scorpers are so annoying when they burrow into the sand. I hate those things. 
use a ground pound move to force him out. Yep, I just said that, buddy. Once again, a little late to the gala. Alright! So with that done, we are going to jump down here because that's where the red chest is and we get an ancient ring. Um, unsurprisingly, all of the treasures found in uh, Pecan Sands are Egyptian artifacts. I always liked Egyptian themed environments because I've always been a fan of ancient Egypt in general. I always had an interest in the Egyptian gods and pharaohs and that great stuff, the great pyramids, the Sphinx. It all fascinated me as a kid and it still fascinates me now. Alright, here we have a puzzle. What you want to do is you'll want to punch this arrow block. That will cause the others to move and it will cause Wario to get squashed, but no matter. We can go and grab the red diamond and jump down to free this Spriteling. The stone-cold statue in front of the ladder is made up of three blocks that contain its eyes, nose, mouth, and a weak spot. To destroy it, strike its weak spot and topple all of its blocks. Crash! Down it goes! We'll be encountering the stone-cold statue a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, we have to deal with the flying shovels. So we want to punch or ground pound or you do anything you can to get rid of it. Then throw it into... I said, throw it into the... Come on! Do I seriously have to deal with the big scorper first? Apparently I do. Well, that's a doof if I ever saw one. All right. There we go. Also, dodge the lasers the shovel spits at you. And then, once they're stunned, throw them into the wall, and we can climb it. Ugh. Yeah, expect a lot of annoying moments like that to happen in this level. Also, expect to get lost because this place is big. I think I said this before, but it's probably going to take me two videos to complete uh, this uh, level. Oh, wow! We've got a bit of a throwback enemy here. Or should I say a throwback boss? Mr. Sandworm has come out to play again. Except now he's been demoted to normal enemy. They don't even give him a skull health bar. I guess the Black Jewel was very disappointed in uh, the Sandworm's performance back in Greenhorn Ruins. Okay, I believe he does take fewer hits this go around, but can't really gauge it since he doesn't have health. I found that uh, rushing him really works well. There's no real purpose to beating him other than the fact that he's there. And speaking of things that are here, a wooden hatch. Okay, this puzzle can actually be quite difficult if you don't know how to approach it. There are several arrow blocks and a platform that's floating in the middle with a red diamond. First things first, grab the gold fragment. Okay, what we want to do is we first want to uh, punch the set of blocks on our right when we first enter the room. So we want to punch it across and then go to the other set of blocks and punch the one on the left. The idea behind this uh, puzzle is to keep punching blocks so they'll come into contact with others. There we go, and now the stage has been set. Now that block is close enough for us to jump and grab the red diamond. Of course, it is quite a tricky jump, so it's probably going to take you a few tries. Case in point, I end up just missing it. I know this is the way you solve the puzzle, but yeah, this jump is really, really annoying to me. Ah, there we go. Second time's a charm. So let's head back up into the desert climate. Not an appealing climate, if you ask me. Well, on second thought, it can be cool. I've actually been to the desert, to a desert myself, and, uh, you know, it was interesting. It was, uh, 
quite a departure from some other places I've visited. But we have this little fan whatchamacallit, or pinwheel, or whatever the heck it is. The point is, when you punch it, a twister appears, which will propel you higher up. Now, you might want to, uh, you might think of going to the left first. No. First of all, we've got a mummy and iron that is going to be punished accordingly for shooting me with a cannonball. More coins. Now, back to... It regenerated! Really? Okay. As I was saying, instead we want to head to the right. Because at the end of the trail is a very easily missed gold fragment. So be sure you grab that before you move on. And move on we shall. Down through this wooden hatch. Okay, first things first, free the Spriteling. It goes without saying that the laser used by the laser jigglefish is dangerous. Try circling it, then dropping from above. The first thing we want to do is we want to ground pound these arrow blocks because not only do they work from side to side, but they also work up and down. Case in point. Then jump over the spiked orb, grab the red diamond, and presto, we are done here. How are we doing for time? About almost 12 minutes. That's okay. That's actually better than I thought we were doing. All right. We're going to uh, go ahead and climb up these blue globes because there is a green W switch that needs pressing. And what we're going to do is, first of all, not get hit by enemies, more on those guys later, but instead we're going to uh, backtrack a ways, because I think the green pad should be down here. Yes, it is. And inside is a golden pyramid. Oh, pyramid. Eh, it doesn't have quite the same ring to it as, oh, banana. I loved that game growing up. I, uh, it took me about three years to finally complete it 100%. Yeah, DK64 is definitely a long game for those who've played it. So this is the Stone Cold Statue, but more on that later. Right now, we have a light blue W switch to press. And also, I believe there should be a hatch around here somewhere. But first, we have to deal with these things. This is a laser jigglefish. They will fire lasers, and eventually they'll float upside down, exposing their vulnerable eyeball. You must ground pound that eyeball, and then you can throw it, or wild swinging, or whatever you want. Or in my case, pile drive through an iron gate. Oh, God. This obstacle course is really, really annoying. Remember that one secret level in Super Mario Sunshine? where you had to make your way across rotating columns? This level's like that, only a lot more annoying. Because the platforms are now big rectangles. It helps if you uh, change from to a top-down perspective, definitely. But even when you do that, this is still a very hard obstacle course. Please tell me that I'm not going to have to cut this. I really don't want to. Alright, you just gotta take your time and make sure you uh, jump accordingly. But the real annoying thing in this, uh, in this uh, obstacle course is uh, those spike balls. Oh, that was close! That was even closer! Oh my god, this level is super annoying. And believe it or not, we haven't seen the worst of the obstacle courses. Oh, trust me, we'll encounter that later on. Alright. These platforms are really annoying because you can't really... It, it's hard to... To, to, to determine whether you'll keep your footing or whether you'll slide off. 
And I'm on the last platform. So can we do it? Yeah, this one rotates really quickly. Oh, I think we're gonna do it? Can we do it? Yes! Another gold fragment, another red diamond, and out we go! Whew! Really glad to have got that over and done with. And wow, I'm down to three hearts. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some garlic real quick like. That is if this laser jigglefish doesn't kill me first. Okay. Two more slices and we will be good to go. Alrighty. Just gotta make sure there's nothing else to collect over here. We're good. There we have it. So let's climb, glue globes. Climb to our heart's content. And now is finally the time to talk about the Stone Cold Statue. This is a very odd mini-boss, but a very easy one nonetheless. In fact, it's even easier than a terrible portrait. It has four sections, eyes, nose, mouth, and weak spot. The eyes will shoot fireballs at you, or lasers actually. The mouth will also shoot fire at you, but the nose won't damage you. Instead, it will try to suck you inward. You have to hit the glowing green weak spots and destroy them section by section. Yeah, compared to the rest of this level, this mini-boss is practically a breather. Okay. Once that's done, we are going to climb and open this chest, which contains... I don't know, some sort of ancient Egyptian canister. And we're going to slide all the way down, grabbing a gold fragment on the way, and into a battle ring. The very last battle ring in the entire game. The battle rings have been fun, but it's time to put them to bed. Or should I say, lay the smack down on them. Alright, we got rid of the hulking mummy, that's good. Death to mummy magons, and death to big scorpers. I hate scorpions. I've never seen one, and I don't want to see any. Okay, how are we doing for time? 28 seconds left, and I'm still at full health. Okay, got some laser jiggle fish action going on here. Ground pound the eyeball. And let's get rid of you. I wonder, can I hit it while it's right side up? No, it's top saves it. Or did it, actually? No, it was saved. And wow, I actually got through that battle ring without taking a single point of damage. Okay, I think now's a good time to stop. So let's, next time on Let's Play Wario World, we are going to finish up the rest of Pecan Sands. See you guys next time.